Four space tourists are on the first flight of its kind carrying humans over the Earth's polar regions. The FRAM2 mission is privately funded by crypto billionaire Chun Wang, who's also on board as mission commander. Pilot Rabea Roga, an engineer and polar researcher, has become the first German woman in space. The crew is carrying out research to help enable future distant space travel, perhaps one day even to Mars. For more, I'm joined now by Megan Christian. She's a reserve astronaut at the European Space Agency and the UK Space Agency's commercial exploration lead. Welcome to DW, Megan. Now, is this space flight special or unique? What's remarkable about this? It is the first time that humans will be flying over the, the South and North Pole on a, on a space flight. So that's pretty special. And it actually presents a lot of technical difficulties because usually you can use the spin of the Earth to help you get into orbit. But this time they, they launched directly south. And so they couldn't use that and needed more fuel, for example. And they are also able to fly over the poles for the very first time. And it's a commercial space flight. What new information about the polar regions can this mission provide? It, it's a really good way to be able to observe with the human eye the poles. They'll be able to observe different kinds of atmospheric phenomena that go over the poles, but also different kinds of scientific experiments that may not be possible in other areas of low Earth orbit. So, for example, at the poles, the exposure to radiation is much higher. So you can do experiments to protect against radiation, which is going to be very important for long duration space flights. Mm -hmm. Is that how, how this mission plans to pave the way for more distant trips to Mars, for example? It's one of the many ways. So the scientists on board will be performing over 20 experiments. They'll be the first X-ray on board, which of course will be important for the health on long duration space flights. Uh, they'll also be testing special kinds of exercise regimes and uh, they'll be testing, as I, as I mentioned, radiation exposure. They'll be learning how to grow mushrooms in space. So it's a very short duration flight, but a lot of things are happening. And crew member Rabea Rogge is Germany's first woman in space. How well represented are women in the field of space exploration today? As a proportion, there's still quite a small amount of women that have been to space, something like 11%, depending on how, how you define it. That's because when it all started, of course, there were only men going to space. Uh, and it was many, many years until women got to go to space as a matter of course. Now, my class of astronauts at the European Space Agency is almost half women, so we're definitely on the way. Now, you mentioned it. This is, of course, a commercial space flight. None of the people on board are professional astronauts. Isn't that dangerous? They have, in any case, been through a long training regime to be able to do all the kind of procedures that they need to fly. And of course, it's very, very well monitored from the ground. But this being a polar flight, they also had to, SpaceX also had to develop new procedures for emergency situations because they wouldn't be landing in the same kind of places that they have in the past. So the, the astronauts, while they're not professional astronauts, have been through all that training. That was Megan Christian, reserve astronaut at the European Space Agency. Thank you so much for all those insights. Thank you. Keith Cowing is editor of the space blog nasawatch.com. He told me what makes this such an unusual mission. We're running out of firsts to do these days in the world, and a <laughs> space mission that orbits both the North and South Pole hasn't been done before, so they're the first. Well, and the, cr the crew includes uh, not only a crypto billionaire, uh, the first German woman in space, also a, a film director. Yeah, and it also, it's, it's named after Fram. It's Fram 2. Fram was a, uh, a ship of very famous uh, history uh, out of uh, Norway with uh, Friedrich Nansen that was the first ship to go to the North and the South Pole on Earth. So they have a piece of it up there. And they're going to have this big dome they look out of, and they're going to be doing biomedical research and taking pictures. So it's typical of these flights. They will be busy every moment they're awake. 
Now, this is a SpaceX mission. That's Elon Musk's company, of course, but it's privately funded by a different billionaire cryptocurrency giant, uh, Chun Wang. What's his goal here? It's pretty much the same as uh, the first two flights that were self-financed by Jared Isaacman, who, by the way, is also going to be, we think, uh, uh, confirmed as the administrator of NASA. So this is a, a new thing in that you've got the resources to do this. You grew up watching too much science fiction. Now you can do it and you go do it. And, um, you know, I mean, they're, they're definitely going to have fun up there. I, I don't think this is just going up to do science, but they are going to do science while they're up there. There's an important difference. This okay, isn't a so, government mission to do research. So, so a little bit of uh, a lot of fun, a little bit of science. Let's talk about the science for a moment. They're flying over the poles. What do we not know about the Earth's polar regions that we may know after this miss mission? Well, um, I've been to the up near the North Pole three times in research missions. It's cold and dry, and you know it's we we know all those things. We've flown over it in airplanes. We have satellites that go over it, but we've never sent humans on a polar mission. And you know, it we kind of know what they'll see, but we don't know exactly what they'll see. And they're going to take some very uh, high definition photographs. So we've never really seen with human eyes, what it looks like to look down at the South Pole in complete darkness and the North Pole coming into complete brightness within a few minutes. Nobody's ever done that before. So that that's something, again, that's, that's new and novel. But also, you know, it's flying in a different inclination and there's a radiation differences and so forth. So we may learn something surprising about that as well. Now, the crew is going to be in space for just a few days, but this is supposed to provide insights for much longer voyages, including maybe one day to Mars. Can you tell us more about that? Well, every one of these missions, every time you send a person up and you do research, you're understanding more of what it's like to, you know, to have the human body in space for periods of time doing different tasks. So everyone is additive. You're sort of standing on the shoulders of the people who went before you. Uh, and it's also just the way that you put these missions together and how you plan them, even though it's, again, it's only four and a half, five days. Uh, that's just that's just enough time to get used to being there. And then you kind of want to say, well, I hope the weather's bad so they delay my return home. <laughs> right, like another mission we've also been talking about. Um, there's another aspect to this. The, the crew members here are going to be trying to exit the spacecraft without medical support. Why is that significant? Well, all right, here we go. We, you know, um, I did this when I did the centrifuge training, and I, my goal was after I pulled six Gs, I was going to take myself out, and I did. But the goal there really is if you're going to go land on another planet, are you going to be like just helpless for a long period of time? Or are you going to be able to do the whole landing, get out, do the everything that's required? This is an exit test. This hasn't really been done all that much. Uh, when you have the Soyuz landing or the, uh, the SpaceX landing, there's people to help you out. So that's a novel experience. And until you've actually tried to do it, you don't know exactly what might go right and what go wrong. So getting out of this thing in the middle of nowhere on Earth is pretty much similar to doing the same thing on Mars, minus the 18 months of travel time. Well, that certainly is a lot shorter. Keith Cowling of NASAWatch.com. Good to talk to you as always. My pleasure.